Hey everybody, this is going to be a bit of a different podcast today. I got a story to tell everybody. I, I mentioned it before, and I think people have been asking about it. So, or not think, I know people have been asking about it. So, I thought I'd tell you. Um, it doesn't have a great ending. Like, it's not like it's a big punchline where it's going to be hilarious or some kind of big, big reveal. But the story's been entertaining. So, you got about 10 minutes on your hands, maybe 15 minutes in your hands. Sit back uh, and uh, and maybe have a jo- have a joyful listen to what I'm about to tell you. So, the story is uh, about 11. Oh, sorry, maybe like eight. Eight years old, uh, but it's, it's it's got some legs. I think it's got some legs. So anyway, I'm going to tell you how it goes. Eight years ago, I worked uh, well longer than that. I worked for a company in North Vancouver. They make outerwear. It's great stuff. If you know me, you know who it was. I won't mention them, but good company. And we had a staff party, and it was I mean I like the party, so I'm like let's go to a staff party. So we had a staff party in Vancouver, and I was staying at a hotel down there. So I after work, I took my stuff to the hotel, and I dropped it off safekeeping. You know, put it in my room, leave it there. I'll go downtown. At the time, I had two cell phones, a work cell phone and a personal cell phone because I just felt like work and personal life shouldn't mix. I still feel that way. But at that time, I had two cell phones, which is kind of ridiculous, but I did. Uh, one of them was an iPhone and one of them was like an old Sony Ericsson phone, one of those white ones where it was like little, like little white thing. This is like probably 2013 or 2014, maybe a little bit earlier. And so anyway, check in the hotel. I've been there. A, I've been in the hotel a bunch of times. They all know me there. And... Uh, and a while ago on Instagram post, I was there and I, I put a quick post about the story. Last time I was there, I had this thing happen. So I got asked a lot about it, so I'm going to tell you about it. So um, I, I put my stuff in my hotel room. I go downtown. Leave my, I leave my personal phone in my hotel room because I feel like it's a work event. No one's going to text me. I might lose it, whatever. So I'll take my work phone. If I lose it, it's expendable, dispendable, whatever, disposable, whatever. It's a work phone. So go downtown. We party, we, we rage, whatever you want to call it. And uh, I get back to my hotel room. I, it was late. I mean, surely it was late. It was, you know, it was near morning. So I back to my hotel room and I just crash out, go to bed, fall asleep. Everything's normal. And, uh, I wake up, you know, feeling like shit, feeling a bit haggard, but I'm like, Oh, I'm good, whatever. So I had this weird feeling that something was different and was going to ha- different today. But you know, you get that. And sometimes you follow up something. Oh, it's no big deal. And nothing is different, but today was going to be different or that day would be different. So I, I wake up and I go to find my backpack with my laptop and my cell phone and stuff from my work or my work stuff and my personal phone. Well, it's not in my room. And so I'm like, well, I must have left it in my car and the valets. I wouldn't, and I'm pretty good about that kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, I wouldn't leave it. So I go to my car. It's not there. I'm like, well, that's fucking strange. I'm like, I didn't take it with me guaranteed. And I know I, I wouldn't carry a backpack around to go party with unless, you know, I don't know other stuff going on, but I didn't. So, um, I, I go to the front desk and I know the guy. I'm like, hey, what's up? He's like, hey, Mr. Proctor. Uh, I'm like, hi, did someone return a computer or a backpack or did somebody return a backpack or just things in general? He's like, well, no. He's like, what's your back, your computer look like? I'm like, well, it's like a Dell. It says my name on the top of it. It's got my company's name on it. He's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, it's here. Um, did you come home alone last night? And I was like, yeah, I did. He's like, are you sure? <laughs> like, I was fucked up, but I came home alone last night for sure. I knew that it was, I came home, nobody else was with me. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, by this time, I'm like, why are you asking me this shit? Just give my computer back. I'm like, we're good here. He's like, well, because we've had some incidents with a room with a guest upstairs. Uh, and he called down at like three in the morning or two in the morning saying that your uh, computer was in his room. He didn't know why and he wanted to return it. I'm like, well, it's a nice guy. I don't know. So he brings it down and he returned it. So I have my computer back now, but I go, where's the rest of my shit? I'm like, now I link this guy must have my rest of my shit because I don't have my shit. And he said, here's my computer. He didn't know why he had it. Here it is. So that's why I knew the whole guy at the front desk was like, were you home alone last night? And I was like, yeah, I was. So anyway, uh, I, st- I started asking questions. He's like, well, you know, we've had this problem. We have the noise complaints. We actually have police on the way here now. Um, we have the hallways blocked off because this gentleman is causing a disturbance and he's been fraudulently, he's here, he's used a credit card to come in fraudulently. So he's used to be his credit card. We found that out. And he's like, Did, were you with a woman at all last time? I was like, no, I wish I was, but I wasn't. So uh, he's like, well, this guy came in with a woman. I'm like, oh, well, good for him, I guess. I don't know. But I'm like, I was not. And uh, I just want my stuff back. So they're like, well, can you hang tight here, Mr. Proctor, for a second? I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'll hang tight. And now I'm kind of getting mad because I'm like, where's my shit? This guy somehow has my stuff. I don't know how because I didn't hang out with anybody other than people I work with. And so uh, I go, what, what's up? He's like, well... I know the guy, so he's, we're talking. He's like, yeah, no, he called down last night saying he had your computer. And then he called back uh, the front desk asking for condoms. We didn't have any. And then he called back and asked for a saran wrap 
which was odd because you, but you you don't have condoms first so then you call for surround up so i'm thinking this guy's getting adventurous or he's just trying to find anything which is insane but anyway people have their motives and he probably clearly he clearly wasn't of his right mind so uh i'm like no man i I'm like, oh, that's fucking crazy. He must have my shit. And now I'm getting pissed because this guy took my shit somehow from my room, which was my hotel room. I, no one has a key for it except for the hotel. And so he's like, well, let's, you know, we have the police coming. Can you please hang here in the lobby? Uh, maybe you can identify him. I'm like, I don't know who this guy is. I haven't seen anybody, but I'll hang out here because I want my shit back. So this guy, they'll, here he comes. They're on the radio. Okay, guy got coming down the hallway here and the cops are in the front hallway now. And the the guy comes down the elevator. The elevator opens. It's like, I don't know what to describe it. It looked like he kind of like dove into like this like vat of fat or grease and just got out and went and started walking down the hallway out the elevator. He had a beer in his hand. His shoes had no toes. They were cut out. It looked like he was just grease. And I, it sucks because this guy's seriously, as I realize now, probably has mental issues and he's got problems. So I'm like, it sucks, but he still took my shit. And now he looks like he's about to cause chaos in the front of the hotel room. So, and he does, he's like, you can't take my fucking beer. He's screaming. You can't, you can't catch me. Don't fucking police, blah, blah, blah. He's going off. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, now I'm off to the side. Like, all right, I'm mad. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, I yell out, where's my shit, dude. They're like, and I thought it was kind of funny, but it wasn't because the situation is kind of not that great. So, uh, <laughs> the cops are there. He tries to run. They fucking tackle him. It looks, it's kind of rough. I'm like, he's on the cement stairs. This fucking goes bad for him, but it sucks. And I, I get, I don't get it, but I can, I mean, I, I have some sympathy for what's going on here. But anyway, now my shit, now my situation is, where's my shit? So the cops take this guy, like, do you want to press charges, Mr. Proctor? I'm like, no, I don't want to press charges, whatever. I'm like, I don't even know what happened here. I'm so, I'm like, what's going on here? So I kind of, I don't know. So I let it go. And uh, they go, okay, well, Mr. Proctor, once the police go to the room to see anything else going on up there, what we can find, we'll take you up there and you can look and see if your stuff's there. Because clearly you had your, your computer but he must have your other stuff. I'm like, okay, he must have it for sure. So the cops go up there, they do their thing, they walk around. It's like half an hour, not a big deal. It's just like, I think it's a basic thing, you know, still in hotel, hotel card, prostitute, and a fucking, you know, homeless guy. So anyway, uh, I've since found out that he came in with a woman or whatever it was. And so uh, I we go up to my, the guy's hotel, hotel room. It's right above my room. So uh, I don't know what happened. I, I know what happened, but I'll tell you in a minute, but it was right above my hotel room on the second floor above it. So I go in there and it's, it's a fucking disaster. There's like, like chips broken up. Like it looks like three or four Pringles box. I like just trash. Like he didn't eat them. He just grabbed them out of the package, scrambled them up and threw them on the ground. There's a few sandwiches broken in half. You know, the ones you buy at the grocery store that's like, they're cut into half and they're put side by side, like in a little package. There's like two or three of those on the ground, spread apart, ham, meat, whatever. <laughs> I'm like, this is fucked up. I look on the bed. Well, first I see on the ground, I see, oh, there's my bag. I'm like, cool. My bag's pretty much intact. Zippers are open. I'm like, whatever. I look on the bed and my cell phone, my personal white little Sony Ericsson cell phone is sitting in the middle of the bed, surrounded by what looks like a pee disaster. Like this guy was like, it looked like somebody was like, I think he might've been peeing on the prostitute. I don't know for sure, but he might've been. And there's like long black hairs around. The room is fucked. And so I'm like, well, that's my phone. I don't. And now I'm just so mad I want to get. So I just reach in and I grab it. I'm like, this, I'm kind of like fucking mad. It's gross, but whatever. So I get my phone and I grab my backpack. Do you have anything else, Mr. Proctor? I look around. I'm like, no, everything else is mine. I got my headphones. Do you have my computer now? I have my computer now. My back, my backpacks didn't have much else in it except for that. Um, everything else is good. So I like, they give me like a bunch of bleach wipes. Like you're going to want these. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I am. So uh, I go back to my room and I'm like, I'm bleach wiping like the bag, my phone, everything else. Right. And I'm like, holy shit, man. Like, a homeless man and a prostitute. So what happens is we went back to my room, sorry, with the, with the hotel, the staff. And they're like, you know what? Sometimes these doors don't click lock when you let them go on their own power. The door just hits the, it hits and doesn't actually click shut. So they're like, our thinking is he was stumbling around with the prostitute in the hallway, trying to find their room, wrong floor, went into your room, go, oh, cool, free shit, took my shit and bounced. Didn't touch my luggage, nothing, just my backpack. And so everything else is fine. And so I clean up my stuff. I'm in my room now. I'm like, I'm like, super hungover and like what the fuck and i'm like this is so bizarre i'm laughing i'm like this is gonna be a trade story to tell my friends like i think it ends there right well uh it doesn't end there so i get my shit i get in my car and i drive him back to whistler 
And um, I'm like, man, I can't tell my friends. So I'm texting my buddy. So at the time, my buddy Mike and my other buddy Adam were living together up the street. We hung out a lot. And I was going to go to their place the afternoon and hang out, drink some beers and stuff, right? So I grab a six pack and Squamish. I'm like, I can't wait to tell this fucking cool story. It's hilarious. So I go back to uh, my friend. Uh, I go home, check out my shit. I'm like, I come over that night. I'm like, guys, you got to hear this crazy story. And now my friend Jeff has showed up, who was there last night with them when, when I was out, but they were hanging out, just hanging out, drinking, I guess. And, so I show up. Now we're all there. And now I'm like, guys, I got a crazy story. And they're all looking at me like, they look at me and it's really uncomfortable. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, what, what's the problem here? And I, in my head, I'm like, these guys are my friends, but it seems really weird. It's a weird vibe, like the tension strange. So I tell them the story. And they're like, holy shit, Proctor. They're like, we thought you were the weirdest fucking dude on the planet. We didn't know what to do and how to approach the situation because we heard a voicemail you left Jeff last night on his phone. I wish I had the cell phone. I wish I had the recording because it's, grossly bizarre and with the story is incredibly hilarious and so i i go hey well i tell him story like holy shit jeff goes dude check this out he turns his phone on and plays me the voicemail that i left him i left him last night and it goes uh, uh, i love you uh, and it goes on grunting and weirdness and some shuffling and stuff so my only assumption is that Either this homeless man, the prostitute, were having sex on my phone and butt dialed my friend Jeff and left him a voicemail of them having sex on my phone or him peeing on my phone or peeing on them or whatever. My phone didn't smell like pee, so I think whatever, whoever's on the bottom probably, you know, was a shield of the pee shield and didn't get my phone covered in pee. So I'm listening to this message and I'm like, and I'm mortified now because I'm like, these guys for the last 24 hours thought I was. Do people do weird shit? Do what you want. I don't care. Don't hurt anybody. Do weird shit. I don't care if you pee on somebody. If you like it, if they like it, that's cool. If they don't like it, don't pee on them. But I'm telling you right now, that was the most, like, the way that flipped to me because I was like, holy shit, this is insane. And then Jeff played me this fucking recording of this guy having sex on my phone in the bed that had the yellow stain and everything else around it. We had a good laugh. I mean, I told you before, the story doesn't have a great ending. But anyway, a homeless man and a prostitute broke into my hotel room, had sex on my phone, butt dialed my friend Jeff, left a voicemail of them having sex. I think someone peed on somebody in that room. And I got my shit back, and I can't find that voicemail. So anyway, that's the homeless man and the prostitute story. Uh, I don't know. You can laugh. You can j- giggle. Jiggle. If you giggle and jiggle at the same time, whatever. Um... I hope I have more of the stories to tell you guys. Anyway, 